I'm Dr. Beatrix Brockman, Associate Professor of German in the Department of Languages and Literature at Austin Peay State University. Today I want to take you to my wood workshop, where I create intaja and fretwork pieces on my scroll saw. I like being in my workshop because there I am totally unplugged. The noise and the dust are not conducive to our electronics that we're all so attached to these days. So here we go. Do I consider myself an artist? Certainly not. But I do like artistic expression. And most recently, in the last four years, I have started to use wood as something I love to work with. I've also dabbled in ceramics, in yarn work, I spin yarn, I knit, I design things. But mostly I've been doing woodwork these last years. So it all started with a honeydew gone wrong. I wanted one of these German Christmas arches and my husband told me to do it myself. First I was a little taken aback, but then I thought, hey, why not? So we had this old rickety scroll saw and I started to work, knowing nothing. It didn't turn out very well. I didn't know how to protect my lungs, so I ended up with a nasty cough using MDF and lots of frustrations. Now when I work I always wear a dust mask and when I sand and do other things I also protect my eyes. Here's a variety of German Christmas arches that I'm in love with. I have made quite a few of them by now and I still do not own one myself. But here's the first one I made. This one is not assembled yet. This is why the lines are not lining up. But this was the very first one and I was quite proud of it. Then I found Intaja. And intaja is what I call painting by numbers using wood. The most prominent artist in the United States is Judy Gill Roberts, who was actually in Tennessee in the Smoky Mountains in Seymour. And intaja is a mosaic of wood fitted and glued into a wooden support. It was popular in the 15th century Italy for decoration and um, the art or the process of making such work is also called intaja. And the difference to marquetry is that we have a 3D effect. So it's not fully 3D, but it has a 3D effect. The wolf here you see is the very first thing I did for Christmas in 2015 for my son-in-law. On the one hand, I'm very proud of what I accomplished in my first couple of months of doing that. On the other hand, I'm slightly cringing with some mistakes I made and I hope that it doesn't end up falling to pieces one day and laying on the floor of the room where he is displaying it. Here are some things I have made, some of the items I have designed myself, some of the items I have purchased the patterns for uh, to produce them. So what you see in here, the wedding picture of one of my colleagues I designed and made myself. The um, picture of my husband, of course, I designed and made myself. The sunflower. And so I love the idea of making my own patterns just as much as I love buying patterns from Judy Gill Roberts or other designers. So here I found these pictures of the bears, these young cubs sleeping, and I thought it was so cute that I wrote to the photographer Ursula Dubrick from Florida and asked for permission to make a pattern and uh, produce these bears and she graciously allowed for me to do it. So I start by making a pattern on my computer then I print it out in uh, large numbers four five six times and apply the pieces to the wood. You see the arrows on here, which is the grain direction, which is uh, also to um, depict the fur of uh, the animals in this case. Colored it to give me an idea of what I wanted to do. 
Then I went to the wood store and I ended up buying walnut. And as you choose the wood pieces where you want to cut out your individual uh, puzzle pieces, so to speak, uh, then you start paying attention not only to the grain direction, but also to how does the grain as it flow depict the fur I want to represent. After that, you shape the individual pieces on a sander. You assemble it. Then you glue it to a backer and you apply a finish. I myself prefer to just use oil, so all my pieces only have walnut oil on them. I also designed a portrait of my husband. So when I saw the pattern for Einstein designed by Judy Gale Roberts, I was really inspired by it. But then I thought I have my own Einstein at home. And so I designed the pattern for him and chose the woods. So I used cherry for the skin, walnut, for the hair and I found some blue pine that I used for the beard and the t-shirt is all made from one piece of poplar that had different shades of beige and green in it. So after you cut out the individual pieces you also have to try and get the 3D effect and this is done with risers which you see here in the bottom left picture. So these are pieces of plywood that are stacked to different heights so that you can then take the finished wood pieces and lay them on top so you get sort of a 3D impression. And then you start shaping it again on the sanders and glue it together and attach it to a background. Handsome, isn't he? The same, of course, applied to when I made our friend William Shakespeare. I also like to do fretwork, which is flat pieces of wood where you cut out the negative spaces to uh, obtain a pattern. And here too, I mostly buy patterns from other designers to create these pieces. It's just a little clip that shows me actually using the machine. So you can see that the machine, the uh, scroll saw, basically is like a sewing machine, so to speak, where you have a saw blade instead of a needle. So instead of, you know, uh, sewing something together, you're cutting something apart. In uh, scroll sawing you can also do 3D where you are using pieces that uh, are cut from both directions. So you have, imagine a one by one piece of uh, wood. You apply the pattern and there where the dotted line is right here, uh, that's where the 90 degree angle is and you first cut out one and then you cut out the other piece and then you end up with for instance, these little doll uh, birdhouses here on the right, or the Eiffel Tower, or the little mailbox I made for my mail carrier for Christmas one year. Fretwork can also mean letters, so I made a sign for my door one day, or an advent piece, or I carved into wood a beautiful part of a poem my colleague Dr. Spofford had written. And here are some of my tools that I use to do my art. A scroll saw, variety of it, a sander, a dremel, and a sanding mop. So I hope you enjoyed this little presentation. And 
maybe think about doing your own form of artistic expression to relax and balance work and private life.